And uh, this is way back in the day, by the way, like on a Wednesday. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it said, you know what, I'm not feeling, why don't you guys just add the numbers from 1 to 100? And so he goes, okay, like two minutes later, he comes, and these are little kids, he comes back and goes, it's 5,050 or whatever it was, I don't remember what it was, uh, it's, it's this. And the teacher goes, how in the world did you do this so quick? He goes, well, obviously, this. He, he invented that. He came up with it on his own. At, at a, Is it Euler? Gauss. Gauss. Yeah, Carl Frederick Gauss. Euler, Euler, uh, I'm sure he would have as well. Maybe he did. Maybe have the names confused. I doubt it. I don't think so because Leonard Euler, his first name's Leonard, and it's near and dear to my heart. So, <laughs> okay. Second one's a little bit more advanced. Second one says what you're going to do is take n times n plus one times the two n plus one and divide by six, and that'll do it. Kid also came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess, he grew up to win a Nobel Prize in mathematics. <laughs> I don't think there was a Nobel Prize, but if there was, he would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> Got his genius. Um, Jordan Gaussian elimination is what you use for matrix operations, kind of that. Um, and some far reaching mathematics. It's just out of this world, literally. Uh, spatial things like Newton did. The last one's really similar to the first one. Very, very similar. Here's how you calculate the last one. It looks exactly the same. But you square it. I don't have the time to show you how these things are made up. I really don't. It's, it's for a different class, actually. There, there's ways you do this. Um, if you'd like to see that way, come and see me some other time, and we can figure it out together. We'll just go through and invent them if you'd like. Uh, but for right now, just feel okay with this, okay? Also feel okay with, with this one as well, yes? Even if that's a constant, so... These we should have memorized the table. Yeah. Would you be able to follow that as well? If 1 gives you n, c gives you c times n. C times one. That would be the same exact thing. Let's do one very quick example on how you would go about doing this. But you'll see it's not actually that bad. It's plugging numbers in and then just manipulating those numbers. So you will have some homework on how to do this. Uh, follow the appropriate form and see that you can actually manipulate them because we're going to be using this in the next area idea that we have. <coughs> okay, what we're going to do is we're going to try to come up with the sum of that thing. What it actually equals, that's a number. A number. So we're going to come up with a numerical expression that represents that thing. Now, give me some ideas what you can and what maybe you can't do on this. Name one thing you can't do right here. What I haven't told you about. Can you distribute the k? Can you distribute the k? I don't know. That's a good question. Can you separate by multiplication? No. If they both involve a k, can you do that? No, not if our index is k, which it is. All right, these all match up. You can't separate that by multiplication. That's not in our property list. You follow me on that? That's a no, no can do on that one. Can you distribute the k? Yes, you can. Though it's a function of k times a function of k, you can distribute that. That's OK. So that would actually be probably the first thing we would do. Because right now, we can't use any of those, those closed form, that, this is called closed form, the closed form uh, formulas to work with this stuff until they look exactly like this this or that. You got me? So, Joe's got a good idea. K squared plus K. Yes, no? Very easy. Name something, someone on the right hand side of the room. Name another thing that you can do right here. Apart. Say it louder. Break it sure. By addition, because we know we can do that. <coughs>
Hey, one thing real quick. Could I pull this K out in front of this? No. no. What if that was an X? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> Do these fit now? Yes. Now we can just use the formulas. What's the N that I'm talking about? What is that N? That's just the number I'm stopping at. In this case, that's 10. So if we can figure out how to plug 10 into this one and this one. Why these two? Hey, they match up. That's right there. I mean, that's exactly like what we have only there's a 10. That's exactly what we have only there's a 10. Plug the 10 in and we can figure those two things out. So the first one gives us our K squared. We take, here's how you plug it in, 10. 10 plus 1, 2 times 10 plus 1, all over 6. That's from the first one. Then from the sum from 1 to 10 of k, well, we got another one for that. We got n, n plus 1 over 2, so that's 10. 10 plus 1 over 2. That's that one. Why don't you all figure that out and see what we got, okay? Go ahead and do that on your own. Do you guys understand where those numbers are coming from, first of all? This is kind of a basic concept. It's actually a, a little review concept. So make sure you get it before we go any further. That's how bad it is. Oh my gosh. 440? Yeah. 440. Let's get a quintuple uh, check on that. How many have we got 440? Okay. If you didn't get 440, hopefully you're wrong. Because that's what I'm putting on the board right now. 400 really is 440 is now the right answer. It is now. I'm not changing it. Hopefully you got it right. Whatever. Let's get 440. People at home. People at home. 440. Even me. Call me later. Feel okay with our sigma notation? How to manipulate it using our formulas? Those first three formulas are the ones we use most often for us. Are there other ones? Yes, but they get difficult. Um, so we stick with those ones, otherwise the math just gets kind of kind of tricky. We have a lot more time, so now we're going to start talking about how to actually find areas of, of under the curve of some sort of function. You got me? Remember how I introduced 4.1? I said there's there's two methods, basically. Anti-derivative method, which we've already conquered, but we don't really understand fully. Trust me, you don't, uh, because you don't know where it's coming from. Second method is the rectangular method. It says how the anti-derivative method comes about. I'll prove it to you why that comes about. You ready? Yes. So, area. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, calculus theme music, but I realized it's already been done. It's Empire Strikes Back, so. <laughs> and everything comes back to Star Wars. <laughs> of course. I'm going to try, try to draw you some pretty pictures here, but I'm not much of an artist. Unless it's boxes, I can't do much with it. Let's say that we have some function f of x. I understand that I've given you this picture several times before, but I really haven't explained how to do it very exactly to the point, literally to the point on how to do it. That's what I'm going to do today. The idea that I gave you initially was, what if we were to cut this space into n equal subsections? The fact that it's equal just makes them easier for what we're going to do next. 
That, that's that's why, why, why they're eating. So basically, we'd say, okay, I'm going to cut this into n equal subsections. So right over here, I'm going to make a little cut. I'm going to go over the same distance and make a little cut. Then another distance and make a little cut. I'm going to do this until I get however far away to be. So equal subsection. I'm going to find out the, the length and cut it into a certain number of subsections. You got the idea? This one will be our first cut, x sub 1, then x sub 2, then x sub 3, x sub n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Because the next one would be at b. That would be our last one. x sub n would be our last cut. My question is, can we find the width of each interval? Are you guys okay on the x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3? That's giving us a certain number of cuts. Remember, a, a loaf of bread says uh, however much, many times you're cutting, you get that many more sections. So if I cut x sub n minus 1 times, I'm going to get x sub n actual rectangles. You follow me on that? So you slice bread, right? You cut it once, you get two pieces. You cut it three times, you get four pieces. You cut it x sub n minus 1, we get x sub n number of pieces, x sub n rectangles. The last cut would be at b. That's where it would be. And that there's enough past that. So that would be the ending of our area. Do you follow? Now, the width of each little interval, we're going to call that delta x. Like change in x, delta x would be the change from a to x sub 1, or, a, or x sub 1, x sub 2. So we'll call the width delta x. How would you figure out the width of each of those things? What would you need to know in order to figure out the width? You need to figure out total length. So someone right-hand side of the room, how would you figure the total length from A to B? Total length. How much? I, I need it in terms of what we have on the board already. B Say it again. B minus X. B minus X. If this was 10 and that was 3, your length would be? Seven. Sure, because you did 10 minus 3, right? Whatever this is minus whatever this is is going to give me my whole length of that area segment. Does that make sense to you? Are you sure? Now, if that's the overall length, how do we find the length of each little interval? What do you think about that? Divide by the number of subsections. Can you tell me how many subsections I have here? I don't have infinite. No, no, no. This is finite number of cuts. X sub n minus 1. That's finite number. n minus 1 is the number of cut. Remember, we just talked about bread. We just talked about bread, right? If you cut a loaf. One slice, how many pieces do you get? If you cut it three times, how many pieces do you get? If you cut it eight times, how many pieces do you get? Extrapolate that concept. You cut x to the n minus 1, how many pieces do you get? N. n. Do you understand we have n subsections here, n literal intervals? So if you, take, if you take the whole distance and you divide it by how many equal intervals you have, that's a division problem that says that I should have b minus a over n for my width of each little interval. Raise your hand if you understand that concept. That's kind of a key one to understand where it's coming from. Are you sure, guys, over here? Yes?